Stop where we go. Stop! Don't change the channel. This is a gaming service announcement. Have you ever been trying to create a dungeon, filling it with interesting characters, interesting things for your players to encounter, lots of fun treasures, but just can't quite bring your creativity to figure out what you might put in there? Don't worry, have we got the solution for you? Or more appropriately, does TSR have the solution for you in 1977? Today, we're going to be talking about monster and treasure assortments of a bunch of different levels. Again, from TSR in 1977-1978. Let's go! Get, let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back to the old world. If you're still here after that opening. <laughs> Pretty good one, don't you think? That was great. That was great. So yeah, today we've just got some more fun stuff that we got from our good friend Brad. Now, um, you're always assuming that people are watching these one after another. But some people binge, are. That they're binge watching these. And if you are, hello, welcome back. Thanks for doing that. Oh, also, I didn't mention this in the last video. Check out the shirt, guys. We Brand got a new, new one. Brand new one. I was just telling my good friend Jim here that I purchased this from a flea market for the low price of $3. Doesn't it look good? We're gonna Everyone comment down below how good you think my shirt looks. We're going to follow through on that Kickstarter to raise 25 <laughs> bucks <laughs> raise for, money for Alexander shirts. to get more graphic tees. <laughs> in this video, we are talking about some game aids that were published by TSR in the 1970s. Um... A little bit of just a quick backstory on this. Some of you may have seen some of our other videos on these old things here. Uh, on old, old things that I suddenly have in my collection. Our friend Brad at Game Masters in Cheyenne, Wyoming, he contacted me a little while back and said that he had managed to pick up a bunch of really old D&D stuff for a dollar a piece from a local library. He knew that I loved to collect these kinds of things and that I would treasure it forever. And he uh, did me a real good trade so that I could get a hold of these. And what we're going to talk about today are some of the things that I got out of that trade. Namely, the monster and treasure assortments that, D that TSR put out in uh, the late 1970s for D&D. I managed to get set one, set two, and also set three. Let's have a closer look at these. TSR early on was, uh, again, Dungeons and Dragons in those, those late 1970s was still largely concerned with dungeon crawls. And so one of the things that TSR put out was this monster and treasure assortment. Uh, it's divided up into, like we said, set one, two, and three, but those correspond to levels of a dungeon. So set one, levels one to three of a dungeon. Set two, levels four to six. Set three, levels seven to nine. So the monsters and the treasure, the treasure gets bigger and the monsters get progressively more difficult the further down you go into the dungeon. And that's reflected, of course, in these monster and treasure assortments. Why don't you read the first paragraph of the monster and treasure assortment introduction page? Open it up. I'll read the cover first. <laughs> these are <laughs> these are pretty straightforward they overall. Are. Uh, there's just something on the front that says this set contains lists of 300 monsters, 300 treasures, treasure storage slash guarding slash hiding modes, and complete instructions for using the assortment to fill in partially stocked or newly encountered dungeon level. Artwork on this is interesting. The the one on page on the number one here. This is by uh, David Sutherland, and then Dave Trampier did the artwork on number two and number three. Those of you who are familiar with early D&D stuff will know those names. They're some of my favorite artists. Very cool stuff. You can We regularly post on our Instagram a lot of art yes, by these guys. Yes, we do. So, uh, levels one through three. This assortment of monsters and treasures by Dungeon Level, I should have just read this, is designed to answer two needs. First, the package provides the Dungeon Master with a de ready matrix of encounters when his players are exploring a dungeon encountered in a wilderness adventure. Second, and more important, these assorted monsters and treasures are aimed at making the making the DM's task a lighter one when it comes to readying the major dungeon in which most of his players' underworld adventures will take place. Very straightforward. Shall I keep going? Uh, no. How about we skip to 
It's that paragraph. The assortments of monsters and treasures have been randomly selected, but they are carefully balanced nonetheless. While it is possible to use high-level monsters on the first level of a dungeon about to be entered by experienced players, it would be certain death to use even second-level monsters against a party of first-level players. In a similar vein, it is not good practice to assign high-level treasures to low-level monsters, as this will allow players to gain experience too rapidly. Great good, advice. Good insight pretty, into pretty the way the game was played back yeah. in the early days. Let's just take a quick look as well. Uh, again, you for these you ha it was all done with percentage dice, mm -hmm. so you would roll and then you would come up with your random treasure or whatever. Uh, go ahead and uh, well, but before we actually go through some of it here on the second page, very convenient. You can do you can do a little uh, just a die roll for treasure is contained in oh, yeah. bags, sacks, coffers, chests, whatever. Treasure is guarded by. Uh, contact poison on container, poison needles and handles, blades scything across inside, all that's taken care of for you. And treasure is hidden by or in invisibility, secret compartment and container, under a heap of trash slash dung, and that's not all of them, obviously. There's tons more, but again, just to simplify things, you've got a lot of choices there. And, and i got to be honest, being the nerd geek that I am, I used to love to take things like this and just roll them up. I, I wouldn't even be doing it to put them into a dungeon. I, I just wanted to yeah. see what showed up by me combining all these die rolls or dice rolls uh, together to come up with some cool trap or whatever that was holding some cool piece of treasure, yeah. guarded by whatever. But just to give you kind of an idea of what the insides of these actually look like, it really is just a list. Of different stuff so you can take your dice you can roll it and you can get some first level monsters that might be in here for example if you roll a 19 you will have carnivorous apes and really all that's accompanying it there's no description of what that is you just have all the stats so you have uh, hit points you have uh, armor class number of attacks the damage of the attacks different things like that uh, if you roll a 30, you can have burglars, 1 to 2, 11 hit points and 10 hit points, uh, armor class 7, strike from behind, 15% chance for any one to have a magic item, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it's just it's all very straightforward. It's just if you have that huge dungeon and you're looking for something to stock it with and you're not too concerned about dungeon ecology, this is the way that you could go. Yeah. Uh, the same thing, there's really not much of a difference between set two or set 1, 2, and 3. It's just that the monsters are tougher. So, for instance, here on the fifth level, you might roll an 88 and get giant poisonous snakes. Uh, giant poisonous snakes, 1 to 4, hit points 16, 15, 15, and 12. Number of attacks, 1. Um, armor class 5. Bite causes save versus poison. So you're kind of moving up the level. Always fun. Up, up the Things level. Things more dangerous. Uh, 62 is werebears. Um, 20 is a black dragon. But then at the back of these, and you didn't go into that in the in the first set, then you get to the treasures, and it is resolved in the same way. You, on level four, you roll your percentage die, dice, and number 29, you get 1,150 electrum pieces, 84, you get a potion of plant control. So, you know, just random, but a, still A lot cool. of it's cash in these. Yeah. A lot of it's just money, but there are some, like, potions and uh, you can get the deck of many things uh, oh, if you sure roll a uh, 21 on level 5. So there's some magical items sprinkled in as well. Then we'll take a quick look at level 3 or set 3, level 7 to 9 and it's got the same thing. These really haven't changed much in terms of treasure is guarded by and treasure is hidden by in. It really looks to be the same as it is in the level 1. Uh, some more interesting artwork, but on the 8th level, you might end up rolling a 58 and getting Slithering Trackers, mm -hmm. uh, which are very interesting. Touch causes paralyzation by those. I did not realize that. Huh. Salamanders, Bronze Dragons, Bronze Dragons. Uh, so yeah, we're talking 8th <laughs> level here. Yeah, cool. uh, on the 8th level, number 82, Superheroes, Paladin. Yeah. Things are a little more powerful up here. Yeah, three, one to three paladins with 54, 46, and 42 hit points. Anyway, just, wow. Yeah, these are really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm looking these at ones it, were really tough. These are thin, yeah, this is pretty difficult to uh, look at. But at the same time, uh, the treasures on level seven, if you roll an 85, you have the chance of getting, if you roll an 85, armor of, of vulnerability. Mm, not mm. invulnerability, but vulnerability. 
Scroll of three spells, two potions of extra healing. So, you know, they, they also bumped up the treasure at the same time. There's an Afrit bottle on level eight. Cool. Everyone. But uh, at the back of these, and again, these were sold in just little packets, just like this. I can remember these. They were, as I, okay, I think I can remember. They were, they were just in a plastic sheeting on top of this, and this was really what you ended up getting. These would end up costing $2.50. Hmm. Trust me, they are not going for that now. But they also, here at the very back, it's kind of interesting, always to me, to see what other things TSR was publishing at the time. It's advertised, yeah. And they've got Dungeon Geomorphs, which we'll be having a video, or we may have already published a video on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then Monster and Treasure Assortments, and then the D&D Character Sheets pad. Which we did just make a video on recently. Although I think these are different. Or are they not This the is a different ones? set. They I think, might be. Yep, I think this is a, the ones we just talked about. I think those came after what was going on here with this one. And uh, I think this is funny. A complete catalog of the entire selection of TSR items is available for two dollars from TSR Hobbies. So if you can, if you want to order the catalog, you can do that too. I want... I've never mailed a letter, so I don't really know how that works. <laughs> it's a sad one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I really would like to know, however, who owns Post Office Box uh. that number. <laughs> in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin right now, and if they still I, receive mail from people saying, I'm going to send I, in something. I wonder if Wizards of the Coast has the foresight to know that that will be there. Somehow I doubt I that. doubt that that's the case, yeah. <laughs> but I would love to know who has that. I'm not going to announce it because no, I don't want you guys inundating them with... Yeah. with uh, Request, but I would like to know who owns that post office box. But just pretty cool little artifact. Some pretty neat things. Um, thanks to our Patreon subscribers. You guys, you guys are, the best. are great. What else have we got going on? Uh, if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, we're going to have one upcoming here pretty soon. We're going to start doing some of the writing and testing for that here, just again to keep up with some of the things we're releasing. Uh, the link for that will be down in the description below yep. as well. And that's it. Well, I think that's all we've got. We're that's busy at the moment. We are. There's a lot going on here. Thank Thank you for sticking with us. Oh, oh, and if you get the chance, help us drive up our oh, yeah. subscribers. You know, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like the videos. Uh, recommend the videos to your friends and family. Yes. We'd appreciate it. We certainly would. I'm Jim. I'm Alex. Keep your shirt on free. Au revoir. French for you.